Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. A few days ago we took a look at GeoWorks, a graphical operating environment first released in 1990. It was a very capable alternative to Windows, but never gained the major foothold that its competitor did. But today we're going to be talking about its successor of sorts, known as Breadbox Ensemble, created by the Breadbox Computer Company. This company dates back to the mid to late 90s. It initially developed applications for use with GeoWorks and was also a reseller of New Deal Office, an operating environment based on GeoWorks that succeeded it and came before Breadbox Ensemble. You see, GeoWorks actually had a bit of success in the PDA world, where a version known as Pen Geos was used on a couple of Tandy, Casio, and GridPad devices. There were even a couple of low-end laptops, like the brother GeoBook that ran the OS. New Deal Office was a licensed version of GeoWorks that was intended to run on lower-end computers in the late 90s that had trouble running Windows 98. Unfortunately, this company went bankrupt in the year 2000, and Breadbox Computer purchased the rights to the GeoWorks software from GeoWorks, the company, one year later. And this is how we got Breadbox Ensemble. So let's take a look at it. Now the very first version of Breadbox Ensemble was released in 2001, but believe it or not, the company updated the OS until 2009 with the release of version 4.1.3, which is the version that we're going to be taking a look at today. Now the OS is still known as Geos and even GeoWorks in some places, so you'll probably hear me use the names Breadbox, GeoWorks, and Geos interchangeably. Now, even though this came out in the year 2009, the image file is only 9 megabytes in size. So what we're going to do is pop in the CD and we're going to reboot the machine. And I would think that this is a bootable uh, disk because, I mean, this was released in 2009. And uh, but we will see. So we have the disk inserted into the drive. We're going to exit out of GeoWorks here. We're going to exit back to DOS and we're going to press Control Delete to restart the system. So nope, that is not the case. In fact, this disk is not bootable and we have to boot off of a floppy disk, in this case a Windows 95 boot disk. And after reading over the documentation, this does have to be installed on top of MS-DOS. So we're going to change over to the R drive here. Now again, we have a, a full install of Microsoft DOS on this computer. So here is the installation program. And as you can see, it looks very, uh, yeah, very DOS-like, very GeoWorks-like. So down there at the bottom, it's got the copyright dates 96 to 03 Breadbox and 90 to 02 GeoWorks. So from what I've been looking at, I believe that this operating system was li like it last got a major update around 2003, like in the early 2000s. But it was still offered for sale and updated. I mean, this version again is from 2009, but the website was still maintained and updated. And this OS or operating environment was offered for sale until 2016. Around that time is when the company kind of ceased to exist. And I'll kind of explain why later on in this video. At that point, it was primarily made up of volunteers. The company itself was a sole proprietorship at that point, so it was not like a separate business entity. So it was primarily, I mean, there was like a small management team, but from what it sounds like, the majority of the people that, that worked on Breadbox were volunteers at that point. But it was still offered for sale, and it cost around $70 to purchase a license for this. So this was still offered for sale until 2015 slash 2016. And this OS is is really your operating environment is really for a specialized purpose as we're going to kind of discover once we get into this it's, it's really not intended for the average you know computer user that uh, would want to use windows and want to you know get on the web and uh, I mean, you can still do stuff with this, and a lot of those GeoWorks applications that we took a look at in that previous video are still in here, and you can still use them, uh, which is pretty cool. But we're going to go ahead and press any key to continue, and we're going to go on with the installation. So this is the license agreement right here. We're going to press Escape. Again, very similar interface to GeoWorks. Next, we get this serial number confidentiality notice that says we're liable for the safekeeping of the CD-ROM. It asks us to keep the license serial number separate from the CD-ROM. Rum. So yeah, if you want to follow those precautions, I guess you can. So we're going to press any key to continue. And here it is right here. Uh, this is the Ensemble Installation Help. You must have DOS version 3 or newer, OS 2 version 2 or newer, or Windows 95 slash 98 or newer. 
Uh, you may print this document. We're just going to uh, skip this. And yeah, very, very GeoWorks like here. We have that same interface. So we're going to go with a full install Breadbox Ensemble. So we're going to uh, just press enter on that. And again, we've already got a DOS installation on this. We have uh, version 6. So it's going to find, uh, yeah, there's the C drive. We're going to press enter to install on that. We're going to install to C Ensemble. Now, so we've got GeoWorks in the uh, Geos20 directory. Now we're gonna have Breadbox Ensemble in the Ensemble directory. And as it's installing here, you can see that it's using the uh, .geo extension. A lot of these files have geo in them somewhere. And that's because, again, this, uh, this still is called, in many places, it's still referred to as geo, and even GeoWorks, as we're gonna see once we uh, boot into it. So at this point, it gives us the same uh, config.sys file screen here where it tells us that it needs to make modifications to it. This is the same thing that GeoWorks did. We're going to press yes. Now at this point it asks you to place a boot diskette into drive A and close the drive door. And it's going to say the same thing about autoexec.bat. We will say yes. Now the command is, I guess it's ensemble. Uh, yeah, so C ensemble. So instead of geos20 the command is now going to be ensemble. So we'll press Y for it to make the changes to autoexec.bat and this will do the same thing. It will allow us to uh, type the ensemble command at any DOS prompt and it will launch into Breadbox Ensemble. We've completed the installation of Breadbox Ensemble. Would you like to run the setup program at this time? Now we'll say yes. I wonder if we're going to have to do the same thing with, because if you remember in the GeoWorks video, we had to modify the geos.ini file on the hard disk because it wasn't able to boot properly because this because the computer was newer than GeoWorks itself. Now, this operating environment, I mean, the copyright date was from 2003, so this is newer than this computer, and so it should have taken into account the you know faster processor speeds and all of that. So we'll see if we can just boot this normally without modifying anything, but I know what we have to modify if it still doesn't want to boot. So we'll press enter to continue. Again, this is the exact same setup process that GeoWorks had, although it does make some changes to the name. It calls itself Breadbox Ensemble in some places. We're going to choose the IBM PS2 mouse. Now at this point, so it does not play the PC speaker sound like it did in GeoWorks, but it's still the exact same interface. We can test the mouse out. It works. Press enter and we don't have a printer. And congratulations, you've successfully installed Breadbox Ensemble. If your installation disk is still in the drive, please remove it now. So we will remove the boot disk, or actually we'll press enter to continue and we'll see what it does. And okay, it's just gonna load Breadbox for us. Okay, so here it is. This is the interface for Breadbox Ensemble. Now right off the bat, you can see that it looks very Windows 95-like. So we've got a taskbar along the bottom. We've got a system clock in the bottom right. We have a wastebasket, although that was in GeoWorks. We've got up at the top left, we've got computer, documents, and world. We've got the same world folder. We have our express, I mean, this was, now remember this button was in the actual window itself. Like for all of the GeoWorks windows that you would open up, they'd all have this express button. That is now moved down here. When you click on this, you get a start menu-esque look, a menu that pops up here with your programs. Uh, I guess these are your pinned programs or your recently used programs. You've got a programs folder here, documents, settings, uh, find, help, and shut down. So we're gonna open up the world folder here, and you can see that this interface here, I mean, we've got window controls on the right side. Now this interface uh, is very similar to the interface in New Deal Office, and again, that was the uh, sort of successor that came right after GeoWorks, but before Breadbox. But at that point, GeoWorks, the company, was still the license holder to GeoWorks the software, which was again used to create New Deal Office. When Breadbox came around, they actually purchased the exclusive licensing rights from GeoWorks the company to create uh, Breadbox. So that's kind of the, uh, the difference there. Now you do have some new applications in here, but if we go into the Office folder here, we have some of the same applications from GeoWorks. Now some of them still retain the Geo prefix like GeoFile, but you've got the spreadsheet program, the writer program. Now these used to be called GeoCalc and GeoWriter. They have now lost those names and they, and you know, the writer is now just called writer. GeoCalc becomes spreadsheet. 
but it is based on the same program. As you can see, a very, very similar interface. We've got the same uh, opening window here where you can create a new document or one from a template. Uh, we took a look at GeoWriter in the last video, so we'll open that up and you'll see that this looks very, very similar, if not identical to GeoWriter. We can create a template. Probably that same template is still in here. We made a memo, so let's see if we have a memo in here. There it is. We're going to create a memo template. And yeah, it looks to be the exact same template. So a lot of the applications are here. They've just been updated with new names and possibly like, if we go to, let's see if we can go to about here. Is there an about uh, function here? There doesn't appear to be a uh, about window where you can check the uh, the version information and that is something that you're going to see uh, a lot throughout this operating environment because it is again essentially built on top of GeoWorks so you've got the same you know very similar interface you know the same programs are here just some of them have been renamed you also have like I showcased in the last video you can go to the menu bar items here I can click on file I can use this thumbtack to pin it to a separate window Although the window now gets a different design, instead of having to go to this little menu to close it, you've now got an X button up here at the top right. One thing that I also want to show you is if we go into the Express menu, we go into Settings and Preferences, uh, we get this very nice uh, graphical preferences panel. And if we go into Configure UI here, this allows you to, if you were a fan of the older GeoWorks interface, which is actually based on Motif, as you can see here, uh, you can switch back to that. So not only can you change and, and customize the existing interface by changing the color uh, of, of certain elements, like I can change the title bars to green, I can change the title bar gradient maybe to black, I could change uh, the file folders maybe to a yellow color, and that's going to be the, the background of file folders, I can hit OK. And now all of those changes, oh, it has to actually restart. So yeah, we'll say yes, we want to proceed. So now it's going to restart the uh, the UI here for us. And when we log back in here, it's going to open up our preferences window for us. And now all those visual modifications have taken effect. So if I open up the world folder, now it's got a yellow background. But as I was saying, what you can do is also, if you prefer the older Motif style interface, you can change it to that. So we can click on Motif here. We can click on OK. And now it's going to restart the UI once again, so we'll let it do that. And check this out, we've got the Geo Manager up there, right? Very, I mean, this is exactly how GeoWorks looked. And it even, you know, it, it, it gets rid of the, uh, the window controls that we had at the top right. And it brings it back to, you know, we've only got the maximize and the minimize, and then we've got our close uh, controls over here. And this is the same, like if I open up one of these folders here, uh, and if I change it to the uh, to the stacked view, just like we did in GeoWorks, again, it's going to have that same interface with no window controls aside from maximize over here. I can go back to the world folder. I can go into the office uh, folder here, open up GeoWriter. And it's going to have, again, the exact same interface that GeoWorks had. The Express menu now takes the form of the little button up here as opposed to uh, the you know start menu style, the, the start button style that would be down here. The task bar, if you want to call it that, is now gone. The clock at the bottom right is gone. And uh, although the Express menu does get uh, modified a little bit because it now has this running applications thing here where you can switch between uh, existing applications on your computer. You can also start applications just like you could do in GeoWorks. And yeah, there's no doubt that you had to be using a very specialized system for a very specialized purpose to be using an MS-DOS based operating environment in 2016. But evidently, there were still people purchasing Breadbox because the company's website was updated. I mean, again, the operating environment itself, Breadbox, was last updated in 2009, but the website got a redesign in 2016, and there were user reviews on there. So it's still pretty cool. I mean, this was around for such a long time, honestly, longer than I thought. I thought GeoWorks died off, you know, soon after like Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 came out. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, they did have a bit of success in the handheld PC slash low end laptop world because there were OEMs that they partnered with to release a pen version of Geos. Again, it was called Pen Geos on these devices, which is pretty cool. And from what I can tell, the company was still active during this period. In fact, the CEO even was, was kind of talking about plans to bring Geos to Android, which actually would have been pretty cool. 
Unfortunately, these plans never came to fruition as the CEO sadly passed away in late 2015. And soon afterwards, the site, the, uh, the Breadbox uh, website was taken down and it was replaced soon afterwards, I believe in 2017, with a coming soon page with a brand new company name, uh, Blue Way Softworks. Now, Blue Way Softworks was created by a former Breadbox employee uh, who was able to actually acquire the rights to Geos slash Geoworks slash Breadbox Ensemble from the company. And he then made the source code available on GitHub. So yes, this operating system, first released as GeoWorks back in 1990, is still around today and is open source. And it's kind of crazy to think about. I mean, again, at one point, GeoWorks was a competitor to Windows. It was intended to be a, uh, a viable competitor, and it was. It was a very viable competitor to Windows, but it never uh, gained the, the major foothold that Windows had. And I talk more about that in the original GeoWorks video. Uh, but it's kind of crazy that, yes, it is still around. 30 years later, it's still around. And it's open source. Like, you can download the source code, you can contribute to it, and, uh, and b you know, build on top of this and maybe make a new version of GeoWorks. I mean, it's, just, it's crazy to think about. But, uh, yeah, again, the source code is on GitHub, and I will, I will leave the link down below if you want to check it out. But so yeah, that is that is Breadbox Ensemble. That's kind of a, a a brief history of it, what it is, what it was used for, and how it is still around today. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do every single week, multiple times per week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.